Parity checking. Parity checking is part of our toolkit for error detection. It's a way of trying to establish if binary data has changed during its transmission from one computer to another. So how does parity checking work? Well, first of all, the communicating computers need to decide which protocol is going to be used. They decide either upon an even or an odd parity protocol. Within each byte of data that's going to be sent, one bit becomes the parity bit. The parity bit will be either a 0 or a 1, but that depends upon which protocol is chosen by the two computers communicating. If they've agreed to use an even parity rule, then the parity bit needs to be set to a 1 or a 0 to ensure there's an even number of 1s in the byte and an even number of zeros in the byte. If the two computers have decided to use an odd protocol, then the parity bit would have to establish an odd number of 1s and an odd number of zeros in the byte. So the parity bit's purpose is to enforce the agreed protocol, either an even or odd number of ones and noughts. In the example below, there are three ones in the main data section, but we need an even number of ones for the parity rule to be enforced, so the parity bit becomes a one, giving us a total of four ones, which is even. It also gives us four zeros, which is also an even number, so that rule has been agreed and that data would be okay to send. The receiving computer checks to see if the byte of data has an even or odd number of ones, and it checks to see if that agrees with the protocol with the other computer. If for some reason there isn't an even number of ones, and yet the computers have agreed to use the even rule, then that data must have been corrupted or changed during transmission, and it will need to be resent again before it can be trusted. So in the example below, you can see that there are five ones in the data, but the rule agreed was the even protocol. Well, five isn't an even number, so that data can't be correct. Something must have happened to it during transmission. Here's an example of an even parity byte of data ready to be sent. A zero parity bit has been added, and that's right because there's already four ones in the data, which is an even number. We can leave it alone. We don't need to add a one at the end. We can maintain a zero. In this example too, you can see they've agreed an odd parity between the two computers but we had an even number of ones, we had four ones in our data, so a fifth one, the parity bit, is added to give us five ones, an odd number, which then agrees with the parity rule. It also gives us three zeros, which is also odd, which again agrees with the parity rule. In this example, the two machines have agreed an even parity rule, but as you can see, there's actually an odd number of ones. There's five ones in the data, that's certainly not even, so this data can't be trusted. Something has happened during transmission, it will need to be resent. And again, in this example, the machines have agreed an odd rule, but there's actually an even number of zeros and an even number of ones. So again, this data can't be right, something must have happened. In this example, it would appear at first glance that an odd parity rule has been agreed between the two computers and there is indeed an odd number of ones and an odd number of zeros so at first glance you'd think you could trust that this data is correct that it's not being altered during transmission however it is possible that this data actually is incorrect even though it has passed the parity check rule and here's how if two bits change places during transmission the data is fundamentally different than what it's meant to be. The data is no longer as intended, yet if you count the number of ones and zeros, it still fulfills the odd parity rule. Therefore, the parity checking system has a fundamental flaw. Also, if two or more bits were to change completely, so in this example two zeros become two ones, 
then again it would still fulfil the odd parity rule. We've still got an odd number of ones, an odd number of zeros in the final data, but it's certainly not the original data that was sent and should be rejected, but if you just follow the parity rule, it would sneak through. So parity checking is a tool we can use, but it's certainly not perfect. Parity checks do not spot if two or more bits change during transmission. Parity blocks. Parity blocks are an alternative way to use the parity system. If we arrange our data in a grid, as you can see on this diagram, and enforce the agreed parity rule, both horizontally and vertically, this allows us to identify which bit has changed during transmission. For example, if we go row by row across the data, we can see that byte 3 does not stick to the odd parity rule, so we've highlighted it in blue. If we go down column by column, we can see that the bit 2 column also does not enforce the odd parity rule, there's an even number of ones, so therefore we can highlight that in blue and say that that column is incorrect. Where an incorrect column meets an incorrect row, we can actually spot a bit of data that has changed during transmission. In this case, it's a zero. By using a parity block, we can actually fix that fault and correct that bit and turn it to a zero through a one, and then use the data. This avoids us having to ask for data to be resent. The same flaws though still apply to parity blocks as to normal parity checking, whereas if two or more bits do change during transmission, a parity block may become useless in identifying which bit has caused the issue, and therefore the data would need to be resent anyway.